So let's take a look at how we might work line by line through a file to try to find useful information. So here's a, a semi-real-world example. I've got some data that I that uh, is from an investigation uh, quite a few years back now um, from Enron. And uh, if you're interested in what that is, just, just do a search on Enron Legal Troubles. You'll find tons of stuff. Um, but so there's this huge data set of, of mail files out there for them, which is why I selected it, because it's a, it's a huge public set of data. Um, but it's, it's real data. So in this case, we've taken a subset of that data. So this guy named Philip, I've taken just a handful of, of his um, inbox files. And uh, the inbox file is basically the mail file, like where it came from, who it was sent to, what it said, right? Um, so I took a handful of those and created this file we're going to work from. So that's what you're seeing here, Enron Philip inbox text file. And uh, if you're interested in the full set of data, I've given you a link there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to pretend here for the for the sake of argument that uh, the federal government has come to us as IT people as they so often tend to do and said uh, this guy Philip we think he's been doing some nefarious activities we want to know um, everybody he sent email to and here's your subpoena right, the subpoena is the important part right and uh, let's assume that our boss has said yeah it's all kosher the subpoena's right go get um, every uh, email that they've sent, the subpoena doesn't cover the context, it just covers who sent it. So I can't hand over the inbox file, right? Because the subpoena says only who they were sent to, not the actual emails. So this is a good example of a time we can do that. So inbox files, just a big hunk of text data. Um, and all we want is just the to file, right? Who did they send it to? So let's look at that. Um, as you might have guessed at this point, we're gonna look at each line um, and just see if there's a to, right? That, that to me seems like the simplest way to go through this. So if, if there's a, in the inbox line, there's a to colon space, and then there'll be an email address. So let's go looking for that. So we're gonna loop through each uh, line. So we'll go for each line in, file handler um, and uh, let's build this thing if uh, if two space is in in let's give a space there just to make it pretty in each line all right so that's basically another one of those simple functions we've done so if it's in the each line. So we're looking at each line individually because we looked at the whole file well obviously there's going to be at least one two in the whole file. So what it would end up doing is returning the whole file, um, starting with the first TO. Uh, we don't want to do that. We want to look at each line individually because we just want to pull out the twos from each line. So if there's a two in the line, then print the line. All right? That's all we're doing. I'm saying look at each line of the file. If in that line there's a two, Print that line out for me. All right, so let's take a look at that. Again, I'm not ready to hand this over yet because um, I want to look at the data I get. And let's take a look here if we scroll up. Um, yep, sure enough, there's one to Tim Belden. There's one to the Outlook team, Outlook team. That's a problem. That one's actually content from an email. We really don't want that in there. It's not covered by the subpoena. Um, there's a two, two, two. So it looks like for the most part, we got a pretty good file here. It looks like it's just the twos. We're giving them what they asked for, um, but a little bit more than what they asked for because there's a couple of these lines in there where there's hunks of email. Now, it may or may not be important, but again, our job as IT folks is to provide um, exactly what we're asked for. And in legal circumstances, that becomes even more important that it be only the scope requested, um, neither less nor more. Is that correct English? I'm not sure. Um, so let's see if we can't filter this down a little bit more. Well, I know if I want to, what else is in the pattern in here that uh, is pretty confident? If I go looking through these, um, it looks like all of them, if they're an email address, they have an at symbol. Right, so that could be something. And I notice when I look at this line, there's no at symbol in this line, so I can filter those out. Again, this may not be perfect. I may have to build up a very complicated filter ultimately, um, but we'll start with this and see how that looks. So if there's no two in each line, and I'm doing this the long way, there are shortcuts to this, but the long way makes more sense when you're beginning. And an at symbol, 
in each line. So this, is, uh, this means both of those have to be true. The way ands and ors work is uh, if I said or at, then it would give me every line that had a two in it or an at in it. So I'd get both sets. Um, by using and, both of these has to be true. What that means is it's got to have a two. Also, it's got to have an at symbol. So let's see what that gives me. Let's print this out. Take a look at those now. And uh, sure enough, it looks like I've still got the same set of data. Um, but I no longer have those couple of lines that came right out of the email. Right? And of course, if I wanted to get those new lines, those these lines out, right? What could I do? I could just simply strip it, all right? So we can go in here and say each line equals R strip. And I'm stripping it after I do the search because I only want to strip the ones I'm going to print. I don't care about any of the others, all right? So each line dot R strip. Run that again, see if I've got a nice pretty list for them. All nice and neat and tidy, ready to turn over. Uh, to fit the uh, requirements of my boss, the subpoena, whatever asked for this list. So you can see that a power, powerful tool, right? Uh, this is one of the reasons Python is so popular. Um, we're just doing a very, very small list, but uh, we could have done hundreds of thousands of emails almost as quickly. Exactly the same code um, just runs through a larger set of data. So you can see we can actually pull out what we're asked for. We didn't have to go hand searching. We didn't have to look for stuff. We didn't have to think a whole lot. We just process it out. Right? It's good luck.